Hey, boys and girls, it's Miss Freitas time. Hey, so I just have to tell you, it's Friday in my world, and I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, we got through another week of school after spring break, and all my students have been showing up on Zoom with me, and I see all my students on on the video um, meeting, and I'm just so pleased with that. I I'm also extremely pleased because I gave my students a marble today for all getting 100% going on to Schoology, a program that our school district is having the kids go to every day so that we can just stay involved in school and do school work from home. That distance learning thing is very important. So I am so excited because my class got a 100% and went to Schoology, and I told them I would give them a marble if they did, and I'm so excited. They they did it. Oh, I just, I can't be more proud of room three because, man, there's a lot in our life going on right now that is so unsure, and, you know, we're, we're really like, what is going to happen next? When do we go back to school? How will I get my things? There's so many questions out there. And oh my gosh, you know, at least we're embracing the things that we know we can do. The things we have control of, we're controlling it. And I'm just so proud, you know. Those are choices that we're making to be amazing. I'm choosing to get on Zoom. And I'm choosing to be the best teacher I can be. While my students are trying to be the best students they can be while their parents are trying to be the best parents they can be to help their students help me teach their kids. I just think it's so great. And and we're doing what we can do until the next thing comes, until Governor Newsom does his job and tells us that we can go back out into the public and um, not have to worry about social distancing. But until then, I'm going to just keep doing what he tells me to do. It's a pretty special time, and I, I've seen so many acts of kindness that I'm very proud of, watching um, people say hi from a distance, six feet or more. Um, I, I was walking on my trail real close to my house, and there's these really sweet rocks that have um, really kind um, sayings on them, like be kind and um, have a nice walk, and then there's some hearts that are just painted with a heart on them. I'm just like, wow, that's so great. So I don't know. I just, today's a great day. And so I'm going to just share my happiness with you. (laughs) Okay. So thanks for listening. Okay. Time to read. I got us a book. It's called Tornadoes. Front of the book, back of the book, spine, it holds the book together. This book is a 2.8 reading level. And it is testable. Tornadoes by Jim mm, Mezzanoit or Mezzanot. And I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, sir. I think I'm just going to call him Tim. Jim. Jim. <laughs> All right. Let's learn about tornadoes. Here comes a twister. The sky is dark with storm clouds. You hear a roaring sound. A tube-shaped cloud stretches to the ground. It's a tornado! (laughs) A tornado is a strong wind that spins in a circle. It is also called a twister. It can move across the ground as fast as a car. The sky grows dark as a tornado hits. There's a tornado. Tornadoes are loud. The spinning winds sounds sound like a jet plane, a rocket, or a train. This tornado spins toward a farm in South Dakota. <gasps> that would make me so nervous. The United States gets about a thousand tornadoes each year. Tornadoes often hit an area in the center of the country. It is called Tornado Alley. The yellow area on this map is Tornado Alley. You guys see that? And I love that this map has a compass rose. 
And they told us what the yellow means. Tornado Valley. Must be a dangerous area to live. I'm sure there's a lot of lovely families that live there though, so. And they just have to be careful and they have to protect their family when something like that happens. How Tornadoes Form, Chapter 2. Tornadoes begin in big storm clouds. The clouds form when warm, wet air rises. High in the sky, the wet air cools. Drops of water join together and form clouds. The drops get heavier and fall as rain. This is very pretty, actually. You see that cloud? Most storm clouds are wider at the top than at the bottom. Gosh, that's just beautiful. Ooh, this is a great uh, visual here. The rain pulls down cold air. The cold air meets the rising warm air. The warm air and the cold air twist around. So cold air falls and the warm air rises and there's our cloud here and there's rain here. It says inside a cloud warm air rises and cold air falls. A tube of spinning air forms. I just think that's so neat. Wow. Oh over here. Part of the cloud grows downward. A tube of spinning air reaches toward the ground. It is shaped like a funnel. Boys and girls, what's a funnel? You know how like when you need to put sugar into something and you don't want it to pour all over the place? You pour the, the sugar into the funnel and the funnel looks very much like this, right? And it pours into the bigger area and then goes down into the small area. See? And so I think that this picture is a perfect funnel. It's true. People use a funnel when they have to put oil in their car. It's a cool word, funnel. When the funnel touches the ground, a tornado is born. Strong winds suck up objects from the ground. This reminds me of that movie, Twister. I love that movie. It also scares me, because I would hate to have a tractor falling on me. All right, a tornado can suck up dirt, trees, and even houses. Oh my goodness. That's a big one, you can tell. That's huge. Because down here is where the trees are. That's, that's a really big one. Sometimes a funnel moves across a lake or a sea. It becomes a water spout. A wa oh, water is sucked into the funnel. Water spouts are not as wide as tornadoes on land. Much thinner, huh? Pretty cool. Much thinner. A water spout. That's what that was called. Deadly Tornadoes, Chapter 3. Oh my goodness. The word deadly is a little scary on a book. Tornadoes cause damage in some places. They can flatten houses and other buildings. The deadliest tornado ever to hit the United States was in 1925. That's a long time ago. It wiped out whole towns. Almost 700 people died. In 1925, a killer tornado sped through Missouri, Illinois, or Illinois, and Indiana. It left many places in ruins. When something is in ruins, it means it just got smashed to the ground, wiped out. It's such a sad word. And it's the leftovers from something that happened. That can be any type of disaster. A tornado can toss animals, people, and cars into the air. A water spout may suck fish from water and drop them onto land. This picture right here says, 
Tornadoes pick up objects and throw them into the air. This car landed upside down in a field. That is insane. It's going to be hard to flip that car back over and use it again. A, tor or tor a tornado ends when it lifts off the ground. Scientists look at the damage. It tells them the speed of the tornado's winds. And then down here, this is what this picture means right here. A tornado blew roots off some home roofs, roof, roofs, off some homes on this street. Other houses were not harmed. Isn't that interesting? How the tornado can just go right by and not even touch one house. But it hurts this house a whole lot and this house. Man. Just so so strange. Chapter 4. Tornado safety. This is very important. Scientists watch for tornadoes. They use special tools to track storms. They look at pictures taken from space, too. Here's a little thing that says, scientists track a tornado crossing an open field. But look, they've got all their really great tools and supplies and probably cameras. When a tornado is coming, radio and TV stations warn people. In some places, sirens sound. So big sirens make noise so that people can go get undercover somewhere nice and safe, right? We try to be safe all the time. How do people stay safe from a tornado? They go indoors and keep away from windows. Some people go to underground rooms called storm cellars. A tornado warning means people should go to a safe place right away. I would want to if I heard a warning, uh, some kind of sound or siren that said, be careful. I would, I would listen. I would totally listen for safety. I would want to keep my whole family safe, even my dog and my cat. Tornadoes are scary, but you can plan ahead. Listen for warnings and know how to stay safe. A storm cellar is a safe place to go when a tornado is coming. It takes you to an underground area. That would be kind of neat. You get to sit close to the people you love and keep them safe. And we're done. Glossary. Funnel. Sirens, Tornado, Tornado Alley, and Water Spout. What I love about the glossary is it's in ABC order. The first word that we came across was funnel, which is in the, in the alphabet kind of higher up, right? And then Water Spout is at the end of the alphabet. Pretty information, pretty cool information and great words. For more information, it says you can come to these books over here and they even have websites, www.fema.gov slash kids slash tornado. And you get to go and look up more information. And then the index is also at the back of a book. See? And it tells you where the clouds are, where you can read about damage, where you can read about funnels, where you can read about measuring, rain and safety. The, what a tornado sounds like, speed, tornado alley. Do you remember that page? I like that map. I like going back and checking stuff out sometimes. Look, there's the map on page seven, just like it said. Tornado alley. I love an index. It helps me find things fast. Warnings, water spouts, and wind. It even tells about Jim, the author. He has written many books for children. He lives in Milwaukee, Wisconsin with his wife and two sons. He has always been interested in weather, especially big storms. So cool. And he's also written about hurricanes, snowstorms, thunderstorms, and tornadoes. Here it is. This is the tornado book. So it's testable, boys and girls. I'll make sure I put the book number on the YouTube front page, okay? All right. Thank you so much for being with me today. Thanks for sharing my joy and my happiness. I'm so proud of my students. I'm 
Yeah, and I, if you haven't found out yet, if you're watching this video and you're wondering about me, Miss Freitas is a teacher. I've been teaching for 23 years. This is my 23rd year of teaching, and I teach first graders. I have um, some really smart kiddos. They love to learn about this kind of stuff. Man, they love it. Uh, so uh, I am. I'm just super proud of the day I'm having today, and I'm looking forward to spending time with my daughter soon and just know that you are doing great things. If you are listening to your teachers and if you're going to your online schooling or if you're in our district and you're using Schoology, you should be so proud of yourself. Man, I just, I'm just so proud of kids and I'm so proud of the parents for being patient with their kids at home. I just just it's great teamwork is what I'm feeling like it's really wonderful so keep it up you guys do a great job but you know it's Friday so enjoy your weekend okay I hope you loved the book I know I learned a few things again I sometimes I need to reread a book so that I can remember all the important vocabulary and I think we added to our vocabulary today that was cool all right have a great day thanks for reading and don't forget take a test if you want to Keep coming back to Miss Freitas time. Bye, guys. See you.